In the latest JW broadcasting of February 2024, we are treated to an insight on the life of three different rank and file Jehovah's Witnesses and the way their faith is challenged in three different ways. But one cannot fail but see that all three challenges are nothing but self inflicted wounds. In the first case, we have a young brother who seems to live in a country where Jehovah's Witnesses are under ban. By the look of it, it looks like Russia. He finds it hard to engage in boldly engaging in the ministry. What ministry, you may ask? The one you have to stand next to, next to a literature card pretending to be a statue, or the one you have to pass a four-page long Watchtower magazine to a stranger where the cover is very much likely an informational, an informational of a UN propaganda. What is exactly the message today that Jehovah's Witnesses are so proud of? In the second case, a brother who lives in a poor country uh, puts his ministry, his Jehovah's Witness ministry, first before the absolute necessity of finding a job that will sustain his family. Is that really a challenge or a faith or more like a self-inflicted wound? During these perilous times that the cost of living crisis is hitting the whole planet, the Watchtower's advice to poor Jehovah's Witnesses is to first put their ministry and then feed their family. It is quite cruel, really, and out of touch. But what do they really care? They live in luxury, in paradise conditions in upstate New York with all their bills paid for. And in the third and final example, a sister feels downhearted. Before she didn't, because, because, because she didn't get chosen for the SKE school, the Special Pioneer School for Kingdom Evangelizers, another fancy title for a pointless pioneer school that reinforces a class system among Jehovah's Witnesses and the need to belong to a special group in order to prove their worth. How is this not a self-inflicted wound? Tormenting yourself with feelings of worthlessness for not being special enough in the eyes of the elders and the rest of the congregation. So, without further ado, pick up your bag of popcorn (laughs) and let's watch together the latest installment of the JW drama. I knew this day would come. True Christians expect opposition. But it hurt to see Brother Vassil get arrested. After what happened, I was scared to talk about Jehovah. Marcos has been looking for work for months. It's starting to feel hopeless. I appreciate that he supports me in the pioneer ministry, but shouldn't he focus on finding work? I was so happy when I heard Nicole got invited to SKE. (laughs) But as I kept thinking about it, I started to feel empty, disappointed. Others seem to get so many privileges. Why not me? In my Bible reading, I found an example of courage to preach boldly despite opposition. 
After I told Marcos how I was feeling, we considered a Bible character who endured with hope. Jesus said, Among those born of women, there has not been raised up anyone greater than John the Baptist. Many that listened to him were moved to repent and get baptized, preparing their hearts to receive the Messiah. He even baptized the Son of God. But as Jesus' ministry increased, John's began to decrease. When his disciples pointed that out to John, he humbly rejoiced at what Jehovah was accomplishing through Jesus. However, John faced adversity, just like worshipers of Jehovah today. John was imprisoned for boldly declaring the truth. Nothing prevented him from preaching courageously. As time passed and he remained in prison, John needed reassurance just like I do. His disciples returned with a message from Jesus. Observe what Jehovah is accomplishing around you. Now I see what Jehovah is accomplishing around me. I can imitate John the Baptist and endure with hope. I have so many reasons to be joyful. Among them, seeing Jehovah use others to accomplish his will. People need to learn about Jehovah. Like John, I can have courage no matter what adversity I may face.